Hello everyone, this is Jack, and welcome to the season two finale of Scares and Nightmares. First of all, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank everyone that's been joining us throughout the whole series so far. I know this is only season two, but uh, I know we've gotten some decent views on the show so far. And I want to thank everyone who's actually been watching. So uh, today, I have a scare that I want to tell you guys about what happened to me just a few short months ago. And I also have someone else here who's going to tell you a crazy story that he has not told me. So whenever he tells you, I'll be just as surprised as the rest of you. But I want you to welcome my good friend Phoenix Asunder back. What's up guys? I know I haven't done a video in a while. I'm sorry about that. Family issues, relationship issues, been... Uh, and my, my, my head hasn't been in the right place, but... Fair and all, let's just enjoy the video. Not let the problems get in the way. That's right. But anyway, let me go first, since my since my uh, my little incident is going to be a lot shorter than yours, I'm sure. <clears throat> a lot shorter. So, um, I didn't tell you th I didn't tell you about this yet, Gary. But um, a good uh, a, my best friend who I, who I won't name, just in, just out of respect for him, because I don't know if he'd be okay with me sharing his name or anything. But my best friend, and you already know who this is, he brought me over one day to uh, to another friend of his uh, new apartment that he had just recently got. And but before he before I actually went there. He was telling me that a few, uh, like maybe a good two or three months before I actually came over there, they told me that whenever they went, whenever he first got the uh, his new apartment or whatever, he said that he started see he said he started experiencing like some weird things whenever he was uh, whenever he was living in there because he's still in there today. It's probably, I'm hoping it's not as bad now, but. Uh, I remember he was him and uh, him and my best friend were telling me like they were telling me about all these weird things that were happening to them whenever he was over there. Like our other friend was saying that while he's living there, he's been hearing like a whole bunch of strange noises. He's been uh, maybe possibly seeing things out of the corner of his eye, or that it could have just been him, you know. But uh, yeah, they were they were telling me about a lot of creepy incidences that happened, you know, while they were hanging out at his place or whatever. So some time went by, and every time when he would go over there, something something else weird would happen. And later on, like he would come over and tell me like what's what else has been going on. And you know me and you, you know like I'm all I'm all about like you know the creepy stuff with the like with the paranormal and things like that. So it piqued my interest. So eventually, one day when I was actually able to go over to his apartment with my best friend we went over there and we were over there just for a little bit and everything was normal during the time all three of us were there but then my best friend had ended up having to go pick up his girlfriend at work and so he was gone for a little while he was gone for like maybe an hour hour and a half something like that but during that hour and a half I chose to stay there and chill with, and chill with our other friend whose apartment that we were in so during that whole time that we were we were there, it was just me and him, and him and it was him and his two dogs at the time, and we started having some weird things happen while we while we were just hanging out there. We were I remember we were in his living room, and we we're sitting on his couch and we were we were watching a uh, Last Man Standing on his TV that was mounted up on the wall, and while we were we were sitting there watching, we were having a good time, we were laughing because the show is the show is like funny as hell. Um, like I was sitting on, I was sitting on one of the couches and I saw something at the corner of my eye because there's like a, where his front door is, there's like a doorway, like a little bit right next to it, except it's more up the hallway towards, towards us where we were sitting in the living room. So when I was sitting on one of the edge of the couches, the couches was like at a weird angle where I could see the TV and part, partly down that hallway. So I thought, I swear, I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye. So I, I, it immediately caught my attention. 
so I immediately went to go, I immediately like pointed it out to him while, we, while he was sitting on the couch and we were watching TV. Then, right after that, this is like maybe 10 minutes later, we hear like another noise that was coming from like the, uh, the kitchen. We heard like a noise coming from the kitchen. And we both reacted to it at the same time. Like when we heard the noise, we both turned around and looked in that direction like really, really fast at the same time. And both of us literally just said, what the hell is that? So we go check it out and there's nothing going on over there. And we figured it might've just been like a rat or something or some, maybe something outside or something like that. But we couldn't find nothing. So we just ignored it. We went back, sat on the couch, kept watching Last Man Standing on TV. About another 10, 15 minutes after that, we hear like a weird, really, really, really weird noise that sounded like it was coming from outside. We had no idea what the hell it was, but it sounded so creepy. It sounded like a screech mixed with like a low pitched scream. And we don't know what the hell it was, but it's, it, it really threw us for a loop because we had no idea what the hell it was, but it was just that all, all like it was just things like that every time whenever we would go over there. Like honestly, if I went over there right now, there's a chance we, we would probably have something else happen. And I remember whenever we, whenever I was going to the bathroom, I guess he has like a hallway where there's like a hallway closet and then it leads to the bathroom and then like a sink. Well, I was like at the sink at the edge of the hallway and he was over at the closet, like in the same area. And then I heard a noise coming from behind him that was in like where his bedroom is. And again, we both reacted to it at the same time. And once again, we're just, we're just like saying, dude, like what the hell is up with this place? This place is so freaking weird. But apparently it's, it's, it's just normal for him now. Like ever since he moved in, he's just been, uh, he's grown accustomed to it. And that's just, that's kind of how it's been. Kind of just from brushing it off, you know? But it does happen. Anyway, that's that's a little uh, little scary that I wanted to tell you about. But now, uh, Gary, I want to let you tell your story, and I'm really interested to hear it because, from what I hear, you've never told me what you're about to tell me. So, take it away, pal. All right. Now, keep in mind, guys, I'm about to be 29, but this was when I was like I'd have to say around 16, 17 me and a friend of mine were actually making some plans to where we actually wanted to go out to eat at Risky's delicious place, amazing but yeah, barbecue and all that burgers and everything, so we thought oh hey, man, that sounds really good and we had plans to go to this abandoned house and little did we know it was in a wooded area that was way more wooded than you would possibly think I mean way more trees darker than you would think heck you shine a flashlight in there it's still gonna be pretty fucking dark for you to see and this house for some reason after we ate we drove there and we thought, out of the corner of our eyes, I kept saying, who's that? It was the old lady. And a friend said, oh, I used to know her as a kid. Now, keep in mind, this, this little lady died when she was around 80-something, and the property was not bought. There was no one's. There was just sitting there. And there was this crazy old man with a shotgun and dogs that I kept saying it was his land. They checked. It wasn't. And police would always be called on people who would go there. Well, yeah, sure, of course, you're trespassing, but if no one's bought it, who's stopping us? So that's what we thought. We walked up in there, and I could have sworn when I said, who's the old lady? I'd look behind me at the, the house, which is about, I'd have to say, from where I would be standing, a good 10, 10 blocks ahead of me. And I swear to God, I literally saw a lady 
walk into the house, looked at me, looked back at the house, looked at us again, walked in and just evaporated like mist. Scared the shit out of me. So I told, I was sitting there telling my friend, hey, you see that? He's like, see what? And I was like, okay, this is, something doesn't feel right. And I kept feeling an uneasy feeling in my stomach. But when we got inside the house, like, I can tell you right now, it was unnaturally dark and really fucking creepy. And the walls had almost looked like almost like lead paint, just, just peeling off. I, I guess you could say it looks like picture Silent Hill when it starts to rot, but with PT vibe. Oh, God. And he said, hey. You take the basement, I'll take upstairs, let's see what we can find. Tell me why, when I looked to find out why the roof had fallen, this huge grain silo was just... didn't look like tornado damage or anything. Didn't look like anything had damaged it in any way, shape, or form. It just looked like someone literally lifted it on one side and just threw it on the house. And I'm starting to go down in the basement and I start to hear the same kind of old lady, but I I hear over here, over here, over here. Come on, over here. I'm like You hearing that man? And he's like, no man, I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs. What what you hear? And I'm just like, uh, it's probably just old house. It's old house, things make noise. Because I didn't want to spook myself. Tell me why when I go down the stairs, I start to see the same clothes I keep seeing this old woman wearing. But on a hanger. And... Keep in mind... The basement is where they had her her funeral because she wanted to have the funeral at her own house. And what we didn't know is, well, here's where it gets fucking scary. They didn't get the chance to bury her and her body in the casket was down in the basement. Where was I going? The basement. Jesus. And... The thing that scared me the most is the fact that I went down there and, of course, you know, rigor mortis sets in, stinks happen. It literally smelled like a raccoon family had a throw your crap all over the walls party I mean, with homeless people just sweating. Oh, it just stank. God. But thing that freaked me out the most is he's coming downstairs and I can hear him coming downstairs but I hear what sounds like something crawling on the ceiling above the casket so I start looking and lo and behold the thing that freaks me out there's scratch marks on the ceiling the ceiling above the uh, of the casket how the heck does a human being get up there and scratch that? It's what I'm thinking, and I'm just like... Either I'm about to crap myself or piss myself, or someone's gonna be screaming like they just got kicked in the nuts, like Soprano. If... If I, I'm thinking what's about to be seen... And... When I walk over to the casket, tell me why one side looked like a freaking... Dude smashed it in. The other side, you see what looks like a human finger bone with jewelry and all that. The thing that scared me the most. When I opened the casket, there was no body. No body. 
And yet, I'm seeing this old lady all over the place. The thing that really stood out the most is there was a piece of the dress that I keep seeing her wear on the casket like it ripped off. Now, keep in mind, someone, like like you say, a grave robber, someone could have pulled out the body, tried to scare somebody, and they ripped the dress. But... No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. It was kind of like that, but it wasn't like that. If you know, if you get what I'm saying, it was something you'd be like, "What the fuck?" Because when I turned around and I kept thinking I heard scratches on the ceiling, tell me why underneath the stairs we found the skeletal remains of the lady in a circle in a pentagram underneath the stairs I had just walked on and her head was in the middle jaw wide open staring at me Jesus now the reason why I'm getting emotional is because this is a story for another time but I've seen things I don't want to repeat but I'm gonna have to to get it off my chest and out of my life. So this brought back some real scary memories of things I saw whenever I was younger. I'll say it, apparitions, demons, anything, you name it. It was something scary that I had seen back then, but that's a story for another time. And the scariest thing is that me and my friend the unusual thing is that the house itself had still had china, silverware, perfectly placed pictures, and but everything was rotting around it. But it's like the pictures, the silverware, some of the there was a bed for Christ's sake in the attic, and the bathroom looked great and all that. I'm just like out of all things, why is the house rotting around all these things? Well, the scary thing is that in the bathroom is uh, where the old lady had committed suicide. And yet it looks perfect. Untouched. But everything around it is rotting. And the scary thing is that, sure, it looked perfect, but why did we still see blood stains from her slitting her wrists? all over the floor and bathtub and looked like no one gave a damn. They just finally found her there, didn't clean up. Now, around this time, I'm scared shitless and I literally had to shit. So I just decided shit in the toilet right there. Uh, nothing's gonna happen because, I mean, heck, I, I, I'm not about to crap myself. But the weird thing is that there's perfectly placed actual toilet paper right there. You can wipe your butt. You're just like... How is all this still working, but yeah, it's dilapidated. But tell me what scared me the most is that, yeah, there was more than shit that day because whenever I was in that bathroom, the door slammed shut. Right as I was about to literally take a deuce. And the shower curtain started shaking and the medicine cabinet where the mirror was literally flew off of itself and hit the closet wall right there and was inside of it. I grabbed that, grabbed my pants, pulled my pants up. I don't care if I had shit on myself. Opened that door as fast as I could. Ran upstairs, got my friend, showed him the evidence, and it scared me so bad that my friend was like, dude, do, do you realize you literally shit yourself and pissed your pants? Now keep in mind, I'm a grown man. It takes a lot for a grown man to get scared of that bad. But to tell me the reason why I did that was because when the mirror hit the closet door, the mirror was aimed at me and all I saw was the old lady behind me, mouth wide open, like she wanted to murder me, Count Christmas style. And 
scary thing is she had a piece of glass in her hand. Now tell me why the glass looked perfect, like from the mirror, but she had it in her hands when I saw her behind me. How does a ghost of a dead woman have glass in her hand behind you? Crazy. So man. we were weren't thinking of anything. I was just scared crapless. But then the thing that scares the most is we start hearing running footsteps from outside, just do, 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 running towards the house. Well, lo and behold, it was the creepy ass old man that brought his German Shepherd, pit bull, and a shotgun. But tell me why the jewelry that we saw in the photo of the old lady in her casket was all on him. Jeez. Like he wanted the lady dead to steal everything. And the moment I said I was going to call the cops and tell them what he's been doing and that he's been stealing and all that he pulls the gun on me and tell me what the creepiest thing was is that Evan remembered a saying that the lady used to say is keep in touch don't cry much tell me why the old man literally pointed the gun at my head and said if you don't want to die you're gonna get around this, get off this property but keep in touch don't cry much this man never met the lady, never knew her, never saw her, never speak to her, yet he knew that sentence. And then I'm assuming you hightailed it out of there after that. We ran our asses off so fast out of there to our car, got met up by the police, and they stuck us in their cruisers and drove us back to our friend's house. But man, I'm gonna tell you right now, I would have rather been in the safety of an officer than to have literally stayed there at any more seconds than we needed to after he said that. Right. But tell me the thing that scared me the most is as we were leaving, all I see is the same old lady, hand on the guy's shoulder, glass in hand, just looking at me, waving goodbye. Damn. You, you don't get a heart wrench sinking feeling in your gut without seeing something like that. You could have cancer. You could have anything. That yeah, that will give you a heart throbbing moment. That will scare you. But man, when you have have cancer, at least it could be cured. This stayed with me, and I'm almost 29. Keep in mind, I have PTSD, stress, depression, anxiety, all these problems. And why is it that I feel like after that incident is when it all started? I couldn't even walk out of my house without looking over my shoulder like, oh shit, who's going to fall? These things have more lasting effects than the worst thing you can think of. Damn, Jess, that was a pretty crazy story. Oh. That's probably going to be on my mind for a little bit, but uh, anyway, guys, I just want to thank everyone for tuning into this episode of Scares and Nightmares. This has been the season two finale. Phoenix, I want to thank you for, for coming back on the series with me. Oh, thank you. Don't worry, everyone. Uh, I have asked him to if he wants to come back for, for some more story time in season three, and he has agreed to come back. So you expect to be seeing him again in season three. So, without further ado, we hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you guys in Season 3. Remember to stay cool, stay fresh, keep on gaming.